beings. There they are right there, go kill them, don't kill us. Let me protect mine, let's write those people out. And then their, their eye will be focused on them and not us. But the point is, after they kill all of the, those individuals that they were initially targeting, the ideology needs someone to kill, right? That's what's not being espoused. That's what they don't want you to know, right? An exclusionary ideology is only an ideology of exclusion if there is someone to kill. The exclusionary ideology is inherently diabolically evil, right? And this is why I was drawn to this, because this is what I study. I study evil, genocide and terrorism, right? This is international warfare, and this is what I do for a living, right? So an exclusionary ideology is only an exclusionary ideology insofar as there is someone to exterminate, categorically wipe out. So after you wipe out all of the initial population of people that you had targeted, well, who's next, right? Well, somebody else. Well, we, we appreciate you French guys helping us out, um, but guess what? You're not, you know, in the case of Nazi Germany, you're not German, so you're next. And then on, and on, and on, and on, and on, until you arrive at this perverse notion of a homogeneous population, right? So... Um, the disadvantage is that, and I'll read this again, this is 2A, terrorist organizers are master manipulators because they direct and control people by giving them the belief that their beliefs aren't threatening to the organization. They pacify their moderates. We tell the moderates, you just be good, tell us, where the bad, tell us where the people we want to kill are and we'll let you live. And the moderates say, okay, well, look, we're going to sit on the sidelines, I'm not directly going to engage in killing other people, but I'm not going to stop those who are killing other people from killing other people. Hence, they are the moderates. Okay, so next, uh, number four. Um, exclusionary ideologies cannot be operationalized. You can't get a, an exclusionary ideology into motion. You can't operationalize it. You can't take the ideology from the state of being an idea to a state of being practice, operationalize it, without the support of the moderates. You need people to turn a blind eye to injustice. You need people to turn a blind eye to terror and tyranny so that you can continue acts of terror and tyranny. You need a large population of people who feel comfortable that they're like you are, those who have power, and will allow you to murder um, uh, in the sake of whatever your insane cause is, right? right? So you have your population of moderates. So you have the tyrant or the masked man, your population of moderates, and then the population of targeted targeted individuals, right? This, these are your targeted groups. The mass man, the tyrant, comes in to exterminate members of the um, targeted group. Mass man, tyrant, comes in to exterminate those who have been targeted. Right? And this is the moderate. Not right, right here. Right. So here are your moderates, here's your tyrant, here are those who are targeted. He needs you guys to sit on the sidelines while I start killing these people one by one. While I start killing these people one by one. Don't interfere. What you could do, right, what you could do is you could obstruct, you could obstruct uh, this, this attempt and thus defend um, those who are being targeted. But insofar as you do that, the arrow is redirected and now you become an enemy. Which shows you that they're, it's completely arbitrary, right? So, what ends up happening is, we'll go back to the original graph, right? The mass man uh, attempts to attack members of his own community. The targeted group is set for extermination. Um, moderates sit on the sidelines and allow it to happen, right? So, exclusionary ideologies cannot be operationalized without their complicity. Complicity is essential. It's important. It's, it's, it's the conduit. It's the catalyst. It's the, it's, it's the stuff that gets terrorism started, right? Because they recognize there's going to be a huge complicit population of people who justify their complicity because they say, hey, I'm not killing those people, right? It's only a small group of people that are killing them. I'm not killing those people, but I'm not going to stop others from killing those people. So when I realize that people are being exterminated, I just turn a blind eye and act like nothing's going on. Right, so um, four on page thirty-one. Exclusionary ideologies cannot be operationalized without support for the moderates. We need to exploit this inherent weakness. This is an inherent weakness 
of any exclusionary ideology, terrorism and um, tyranny being one instantiation of exclusionary ideologies. So there is a weakness in exclusionary ideologies with respect to the moderates. So similarly, there is a weakness in any terrorist ideology, any tyrannical ideology, because of the role that moderates play. So um, how do you exploit it? Known supporters, financiers, those who provide safe havens, even those who know but remain silent, should be punished to the fullest extent. And they should be made an example of. Send a message to the moderates. This is, you know, and I'm not going to get explicit in this because this is a public discussion uh, and I'm a public intellectual, so I will leave, the, I will leave a lot of this up for inter interpretation and I'll let you make your own assessments of what I might or might not mean in this. But I'll give you an example. Imagine that I am, uh, I'm not imagine, I am a professor and I teach um, a graduate class of, let's say, 40 students, right, and they're all in the class. And I recognize in the class that there, there, there's something wrong going on. There's, there's, there's probably, let's say, some cheating, right? So students are cheating. Um, and there are a lot of, and the students that are cheating are, are, are bullies, right? And there's, there's this cheating going on. And there are a lot of people, and I can't figure out who is cheating, right? And a lot of people know who's cheating. They know who's cheating. But they say, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rat them out, right? Because I don't want to be a rat. I don't want to tell who's cheating, because I might get in trouble from those people. Well, since I don't know who is technically cheating, but I do know who's sort of standing by, I just select some random moderate. I just select some random person who I believe is not cheating, but is, is cowering. And I'll make an example of that individual. I wouldn't do this in my class, right? I'm not this type of educator. But I think it's different when you're talking about education than you're talking about international. Make an example of the moderates, right? Okay, um, since no one in the class is going to tell me who cheated on the test, um, everyone in the class is going to get an F um, until I find out who cheated on the test. And you better believe people are going to start to bubble, right? There's stuff, information is going to start to rise to the surface, right? Um, I wouldn't do this as an educator. Um, so the example on an educational level in a classroom is bad. However, the example on an international level really isn't that bad, right? You have to recognize that all of this all of this, all of this discourse, all of the discourse on genocide, all of the discourse on tyranny, all of the discourse on, on uh, exclusionary ideologies and terrorism, all of this discourse is at its base, at the deepest, deepest level, even deeper than exclusionary ideology, a discourse on power. And a lot of power is perception. If you look weak, you are weak. If you talk weak, you are weak. If you look strong, you are strong. If you talk strong, you are strong. So, if it's the case that moderates are standing on the sideline, and we have outside, we have outside agitators, and we know that people are being exterminated in the population, well, we need to make an example of the moderates. Listen, we recognize that you're not killing these people directly. We recognize that you're not directly contributing to the death of these people, but you could stop, or you could stop them directly, or you can give us the information that we need. If you don't give us the information that we need in order to stop them, then guess what? We're gonna we're going to intimidate you. <laughs> we're going to intimidate you, right? Um, and you determine how that intimidation unfolds, right? You can make an example of people, people who know people indirectly. You can arrest them. You can do whatever you need to do. But the point is, moderates think that they're it's okay to sit on the sidelines. And what you have to let them know is that this isn't a game where you can be in the game or out of the game. Every human being on the globe is a player in this game. You are either, quote-unquote, the saying is, you are either with us or against us. Those who support democracy are saying that. Those who support terrorism are saying that. You are either with us or against us. There is no alternative, right? It's, there's not like a, I'm going to remain neutral, right? Insofar as you think you're going to remain neutral, you become weak and you become targeted. Those individuals who support, who, and, you know, um, people who support finance, those who sponsor, give safe haven, are, there is no gray. It's not that you're with us, you, then that, that means you're against us, and we are going to have to make examples of you. Um, <clears throat> how that example unfolds is not for me to discuss, or to suggest. So that's the idea. You exploit the weakness of the moderates, the inherent weakness of the moderates. The disadvantage, however, if you take that approach, is that terrorists will use the attack, arrest, 
prosecution, etc., of my